Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the September 7th meeting of the Personnel Board. Uh, my name is Bill Moracek, and I'm the, the chair. Uh, I'd like us to try to keep on sort of first name basis. I mean, I'm not a great last name kind of person, and a lot of people can't even spell Moracek, so you know what the heck. It's, uh, um, so I'm, I'm going to be a little bit maybe more informal, but you know that, that's sort of um, I guess maybe who I am a little, and I'd like to be able to relate to people, you know, one on one as opposed to you know in a different kind of a formal setting, which isn't really me. Um, you've met or haven't met, but why don't I let Liz? Why don't I let the two of you introduce yourselves? Okay, Nancy Crowley. I've been uh, born and brought up in West Concord, so I've been here forever. So. <laughs> I'm very familiar with different things, so pipe plant, etc. So, yes, I'm uh, Liz Cobbs and um, moved to Concord two years ago. So, not from West Concord, not a long time <laughs> uh, person in town, but learning a lot um, from my colleagues on the personnel board and just um, being in town now that we can meet people and shake hands without COVID. So, thank nice you. To meet you. So, I'm going to call a meeting to order. Um, and do the roll call since we make certain that we have a quorum. There are only three of us on the personnel board, so if you don't have three, you don't have a quorum. So Nancy Crowley? Okay. Okay. Present. Liz Cobb? Present. Bill Moracek, present. So we do have a, a quorum and we're ready to proceed with the um, tonight's agenda. You can see that there's really, uh, there's several different items, but the first one we're going to discuss and the first one we're gonna cover is uh, the the appeal um and i think jim is the going to be the spokesperson there so the presentation of the written appeal that's what we're gonna that's the first item and then the second one based on that will sort of determine next steps um this is you know i've been on the personnel board for probably two and a half years nancy has been much longer than that liz is is the newest member so it's not like we have a wealth uh, history behind us in terms of protocol or you know what's the right way or the wrong way and so some of this I think is just common sense and that's what I'm going to you know use here try to use as we uh, as we go through the um, the first item which is the appeal process so Jim I'm going to let you have the floor and let you uh, let you speak. <clears throat> okay, thank you. I would, uh, appreciate you guys all taking the time to uh, hear, just hear us out. Um, I don't really have a lot to say. I want to let the appeal speak for itself. Um, as far as how things came to be, basically our question is why our positions were excluded from a structure adjustment um, for the last classification and compensation study. I asked for a review of the data which was used to come to this. I never really got a, none of us really got an answer. Um, I do have copies here of the mean salary survey that was supposedly used to come to this decision. So I, you know, you can review, <laughs> review this or as you like, but um, those are basically just our questions why our positions were excluded when every other position in the electrical management and labor group got the classification, got a classification bump. And two of the positions were actually reclassified to exclude them from the structure adjustment. That bottom line is that's, that's all we, we're really requesting, just a review of the data and how this decision was come to be. Okay. Um, questions from Nancy or Liz? No, I point? read all that um, you put together, that you put together, so it's, it's pretty conclusive. So I think that what you're asking is exactly what I've seen in the notes and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, um, I apologize if I missed anything, but I had some specific questions um, about what your um, what was done versus what your concern was. So the reclassification was a, a salary range reclassification, 
Correct. Okay. And for for what I read, um, and I, I think this is only of one of the positions. It was an example that you gave. It wasn't the whole thing. So um, correct me, okay? But um, it sounded like one of the answers that you got from um, from Car Carrie Lafleur, I believe, uh, said that there was. Um, an expansion of the range in the new classification for one that allowed a 10%, there was 10% leeway there for one of the roles. Is that correct? Um, I, all I know is, like I said, every position in the electrical labor group and electrical management group got yeah. a 9% structure adjustment, except for four positions, us five employees. Okay. Um, Okay, so then I'm just going to repeat back and make sure I understand. Okay, so um, the 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 reclassification of the others was that their salary ranges now had a nine percent uh, upgrade. Correct. And your the reclassification for the five positions that we're talking about here, um, two two of them were renamed. Is that correct, or was it three, two? All right, so two were renamed, and that classification also has a salary range attached to it. Correct. Is that right? And that salary range didn't move the 9%. Did it move at all? 3%. 3%. Okay, so the two positions that were reclassified, the range moved a little bit, but there's a 6% difference between what was moved for those two positions versus moved in general terms for all other positions and we were included in that as well our positions were included in the three three percent yes okay so then so um two that were reclassified and three that weren't given a new name were only Just given excluded. a three percent range differential versus a nine percent that came a year or so later is that right the the change for the rest of the the light group that all had July, July 1 was July 1. Just, okay. At town. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then yours, though, were reclassified before that, right? So it wasn't done at the same time. That was what my was, impression was. No, this was, was all done at the same time. It was done at the same time. Yeah. I must have, I, I'm sorry. I must have missed that. Um, all right. So, okay. So I'll leave it there for now. And I have some other questions, but Bill, I think you have questions too. So, go well, ahead. what I want to do is, um, you know, I, I think I, I'm going to encourage you, Liz, to go ahead and, and continue to ask whatever yeah. additional questions. Um, when it's my turn, what I'd like to do, Jim, and, and the rest of you is, is I'd like to understand, talk a little, we'll talk a little bit about the expectations. That's on the page that uh, I'm looking at right now. Um, expectations, independent review, ability to continue our long tenured proud service. And there was a third one, which why am I not finding it? Can you tell me? Yeah, I, I think there was on the summary at the very front the summary down the bottom, and then it went on to that page. Oh, the summary itself. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so so I guess there really are only two. There's the, uh, it's the, your expectation was independent review. And then I'm, and then the ability to continue our long tenure to proud service. So what I'd like to do, that's, I'm going to focus my time trying to understand that because I think it'll help us right. as a group understand what would be a good next step uh, from here. But I'm going to let you as finish whatever clarifying questions you have okay. to, um, Whatever questions they have for Jim. So, um, so I didn't explain my background, and I've certainly worked in. Um, I was in a management position before in in a pharmaceutical company, so it was very different than what you experienced. And I want to actually apologize because the first thing I would always do um, if I wasn't um, in a, I was baking a pie before I came here. So it's a different mindset than, than I'm usually in in this, in this situation. But the first thing I, I should have said to you all is thank you. Because the service of having your own light system in the town that you live is amazing. And that means that you all work very hard. 
and that you're very skilled to do that work. And I appreciate that so much. You know, they when I moved to town, people would say, this is why we don't have problems with, you know, long outages and so forth. And, you know, with environmental changes and so forth, that's where we're headed. So thank you, all right, first. Um, now, this is a situation where, for me, there is a question of if it happens. So my other question was, I thought this happened in two sequence, in a sequence, right? That there were two different time frames. But this all happened at the t same time where, um, and, and I did see the back and forth where you were clarifying, it was every other position but these five. So why were these treated differently? Um, so that's one line of question, right, is to understand what was the rationale and to have some clarity around that. I think that's where we are now, right, is to have that in the forum. And then the second line of question is, um, and I don't know if we have to go this far or not, but does, um, so these, these ranges are important, no doubt. And so that your concerns here are raised to this level isn't understandable because the ranges are locked in and they, you know, you feel constrained by that in, in, in a sense, right? So I understand that. What I guess I don't understand is um, how the ranges, and maybe the, Amy, this is a question for you, is the ranges with the, the new review that we've just under started um, are also going to be reviewed. Um, and so I want to understand what's the timing of these things. Right, I understand that, and, and it was pointed out in a longer letter um, from uh, Terry Lafleur that this was coming, and that we have been late to get to this stage. So that it's understandable. She indicated something like that that this is a bit overdue, and so we have to do that. So, are we looking at these positions being reviewed in the whole program, and therefore, what's the time lag? for this to be in place versus anything new that might come? And how does that impact these decisions? I'm not clear on that myself, so. Is that it? I, I would, would you like you, me to speak yeah, to, you, uh, to speak to that? Um, okay, so <clears throat> what's, what's happening right now is a complete classification and compensation study, which right. is what, what GovHR came and talked about last time. And so that is a look at the entire class and comp system, which does go back to the salary ranges. Mm -hmm. And after this complete study of gathering information about every single position in the plan, um, in terms of what the duties are, um, gathering information on benchmark positions, which is key to here, we don't have we don't have data on every single position. We we yeah. we look at benchmark data, but gathering that benchmark data. Uh, salary ranges and classification groupings for town meeting for next year. Yeah. So it would happen in the spring with a proposal for July 1. Yeah. That's a comprehensive look at everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Annually, we're looking at the plan that exists and tweaking it along the way based on on a number of factors so everything related to the salary and compensation plan has a number of factors going on within right, the groups right. those also have led to recommendations at town meeting every single year that go into effect on july 1 mm -hmm. um, and what they're bringing forward are some adjustments that were made last year and didn't impact every position we did we actually did recommend changes for every single position but they're asking about why did some move some ranges move three and others move nine mm -hmm. did that answer <clears throat> what you're asking uh no not fully i'm i'm wondering um so so given so what i guess you can't answer is will these specific positions be moved again given that gov hr is working on this new comprehensive classification system or are they exempt from this because we are looking at the light um comparisons right we are looking at the light comparisons and these positions will will be, be okay. are included in that study and so there will be recommendations for next july of, yeah. uh, for salary ranges for these positions and they will be looked at by the consultant okay. all right and were you were you aware of that too yes. you are okay all right just to make sure we're all on the same page all right 
Okay. Let's, uh, so let me let me spend a little time. Um, I guess I'm going to focus on the, your summary, Jim, because I think it, it raises uh, the points very well. Um, you mentioned that the exact procedures and timelines defined in PPP 25 weren't followed, or aren't. So I was curious as to what 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 has. Can you go over the history of? Well, if you read the PPP 25, it it states a lot of you know timelines as far as right as if each step isn't followed then you know the, it wouldn't be valid i said that's the way i took it so i knew we, you know we hadn't you know it was beyond the time frame of what ppp 25 states right so i just you know kind of was making that point we understood that you know it, it was a delayed submittal if you will and the and the explanation for the reason for the, the delay is how would you describe that? <laughs> well, I mean, we had discussions and those people were concerned. I mean, it's not something that we, you know, we've all been here a long time. Yeah. Um, between 15 and 40 years with talking to these employees that are uh, involved in this. And it's it's not something we took lightly and it's it just takes took time to. Okay. So you're, can I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you were you were looking forward to this body, the personnel board, uh, essentially accepting your your appeal and having the discussion that we're having right now. Is that a fair? Uh, yes, statement? that's a fair statement. And like I said, really, um, you know, from what I was told, that the the meme data, uh, municipal electric associations of Mass data was used to come to these decisions. And when you review the data, you know, okay. it doesn't match. And that was especially after we looked at it, okay. we really determined that we would come forward with this. Okay. So that sounds like an open area for, you know, for examination in terms of how is the data, because we, we all can interpret data differently. Sure. And there's, there are um, structures that are in protocol sort of how you're supposed to look at data and how, how that's used so not that i'm an expert in this but i i did work in in the nature field for my whole career um i want to take a little time now and talk about your expectation independent review so can you can you just can you elaborate a little on what you mean by independent review i, I was just looking for anybody to have a re reviewed the data we have and against what was, um, you know, we were told analysis was performed to mm -hmm. come to this. Yeah. And we were looking for someone to look at the actual analysis. Were you thinking that the personnel board could be that body or not? I was hoping it wouldn't come to that. I was hoping I would hear, you know, there would have been a review either from Kerry or that was my first stop that I went to when we first heard that this okay. all went down. So, but uh, at this juncture, I mean, you have essentially are here because you have exhausted the previous steps. Correct. So, again, I want to just is the personnel board now the independent review that you're you're talking about, or or are you looking for a, a third party? I guess. Uh, no, the, the personnel board. I mean, I, I, I couldn't think of any other. Okay, all right. You know. So, so that that personnel board would satisfy this, how, as you've described it, as independent review. Yes. Okay. I wasn't. I wanted to sort of <laughs> make certain that that uh, that you had uh, um, that you considered the personnel board could perform that particular. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Now, then you talk about the ability to continue our long tenure crowd service rate payers um, and strive to earn raises within our salary structure. What elaborate a little on what is involved? What what are your thoughts? You know, you and your your co your colleagues there in terms of what you mean by by this. I would just say I would think, and I'm not saying the situation is that is as it is now. But there was a time that there was a concern about repercussions 
Hmm. Okay, so that's because you've been here long enough, and I have no idea when you started. Uh, uh, 2000. 2000, okay. I was just a kid, so. Uh, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, during that period of time, you've had, the, the city has recommended to the town meeting increases. Correct. Each of those, and you've been a, a recipient of, yes. of that. And then we come up to this year, and you did you receive uh, an increase that uh, that that was commensurate with your particular grade, your your level? I did receive an increase. Yes. Okay. So then, then your concern, since you were you you reached what you re achieved what you, or you uh, obtained what you what you uh, I guess at the time felt you should get mm -hmm. uh, by the rules then what what is what are you hoping for what what are your what's your what do you what's your objective then if you've already gotten an increase well my objective as I put in is we will you know those the structure our positions we feel were devalued and Basically, we just, like I said, we want to work and strive towards getting those, that increases in our structure eventually. Okay. So can I interrupt? <clears throat> so it sounds like, so I brought up the point that there's another review coming. Mm -hmm. And Bill, you're saying you, you got an uh, increase, but that's separate from the range increase. And you're saying we want our value in the roles to be recognized with the ranges, not just with the incremental increase annually. Correct. And that, okay. you know, and that hasn't been done. So then it could be you're I, I'm I'm reading into this. It could be that you think that when the overall gov HR evaluation is done, that your roles will be lower. Than they would have been a, a year ago when they're evaluated versus comparable towns, et cetera, so that you would not be as valued and the roles that you all hold wouldn't be valued in that new system. You'd start at a discount in a sense. Well, I feel we've already been devalued 6%. Okay. In our ranges. In your ranges. You know? Yeah. And like I said, this is all future. It's none of it's, you know, none of us are expecting, you know. Right, right. This right now, it's this is all for the future for our positions and our value. Yeah. So I would like to just go over that for a minute. My understanding was in going through everything is that basically it was the nine percent that the others got nine percent, and just you people position things or. Uh, description was changed and you did not get nine percent correct so the three percent you did get that's from the nine percent is that what you're saying so yes. you're out six percent per se correct okay okay yes I just wanted to clarify that because I'm still on the nine. but just to, just to go back to my point was you're not at, are you out six percent in in pay that that you get at your paycheck no Okay. No, right now, no. The, it's, the other words, it's the range. range. It's, it's the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, I just want to make certain. Right. Right. Yeah, right. I just want to make certain we're all using right. sort of the same yes. language and the same definitions. And and um, one of the one of the points you made, Jim, was talking about the relationship between apparently this decision and the retirement plan, the retirement Concord retirement. Um, um, yeah, that was, uh, me and Carrie were having the discussion, and I think the, the conversation got away a little bit from, we were talking about different, you know, times, things were changed, you know, I've, um, you know, I started off as in a different position here 22 yeah. years ago, and so I have been promoted, um, so, like I said, other, other any other discussions really kind of, uh, you know, maybe took things into the weeds a little bit, if you will. And I didn't, you know, it's not so much a discussion of what was, it's just the, as you know, the I put in the appeal that this was our only concern. Uh, as far as, like I said, retirement, that was kind of a separate conversation. Our conversation maybe took a little sidetrack. Okay. Um, so, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna re 
state what I think okay. Go ahead. Uh, is that the point about the retirement plan that you were disadvantaged into the retirement plan because of this decision no, is, not, is, is not at all an issue anymore. No, because absolutely it, not. No. Okay, right. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think it's one thing, to, it's a good thing to get one thing off the table yeah. no, that, no, no. that it, it's a non-issue. Correct. And I think, you know, in, any uh, employee who, who may have read and so forth, uh, you know, it's good for us, it's good for you, it's good for the town to know that, you know, they're two different, entirely different systems, Correct. different programs. And, you know, we, 100%, yeah. we only, we're the personnel board for comp and benefits and there's a retirement board. So uh, I haven't even, I don't know who's on it and they never know, but, um, but that's a whole different entity. All right. Um, any other comments or questions, Council? Um, I think there are two other. There are two kind of. So I, I split everything and try to categorize things. So bear with me. But it sounds it sounds like um, there is an opportunity to review again. And I'd like to look at the data and get a better understanding from Amy and from Dave about how that decision was made. If we do that here, if we do it in writing, I, I don't know, but I think that's the main thing you want to understand. How did you get to that when I'm looking at the data and I see something different, right? Correct. And I, I think that's a valid thing to get a, more clarity. And I didn't see clarity in, in the explanation in the letter that you got yet. So I think that's a good, reasonable thing to do if, if we can get there. The other thing I want to point out is that, and, and I understand why, given that, you know, especially longevity of service is a real thing. It's a very important thing. And it means that when something goes wrong, you all have experience of knowing how to make it go right. And I think that's, you know, for all of us, that's where we really need to understand and appreciate there's a lot that we can't do on our own is citizens of the town, et cetera. But what's coming across to me is that you might not feel appreciated too. And that's, that's, a, that's a problem that overlaps with what we're talking about, but it's another issue of in and of itself too. And I think that the, as I've been here two years in the town, I think there's been a lot of transition and management and the town manager moving and so forth. And um, I think there's the survey that we don't have all of the information about yet from the personnel mm -hmm. study task force. So there's a lot more under that part, which I want to acknowledge is part, it may be hitting you all and not feeling like we're all lined up to do the right thing and trust each other and build. And, you know, as I, um, I was outside the U.S. for a long time, for almost a decade, and I came back and this society had changed quite a bit, and there was a lot of um, distrust um, here that I hadn't expected, and, um, and, and I was in D.C., which you can imagine was very distrustful <laughs> at that time, but, um, but, I, but I just want to recognize that um, part of what we're trying to do with the personnel board, certainly um, Bill's been um, the lead of that and talking with Amy and uh, trying to understand the town, um, it's understandable that there's tensions here too. And that um, we come to this meeting and, and this, and um, I guess I'm grandstanding here, but um, just to say with great respect um, and you know that there's, there are, when you get into these situations and you're thinking that 6% is a long-term disability for, for your recognition, um, let's make sure that's not what it is, okay? Um, and, and I don't see, um, and Dave, maybe you wanna comment, is that okay if he, he has a comment? Because you as the, the manager of the, the whole plant, right? Um, I, I'm not getting the impression that's your objective there to, to foster you know a, a hard work environment or anything like that so sorry Bill. i'm going to keep we're yeah. going to keep just um right. keep going just okay what, you know just sorry yes yeah. and 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 uh, jim and his is his colleagues there okay i think that that um liz has, has made some very excellent points for sure that probably resonates with uh, with each one of you um i am I'm encouraged by what I've seen so far with 
this outside company, GovHR, in terms of their history, their, their experience in municipalities, the number of uh, cities in, the, in, the, in Massachusetts. I mean, it's very impressive. And uh, this, the town is obviously uh, has to and has been, been, been late, been tardy for, for some time for sure, but is, is, uh, is going to move forward and we're going to do that study. And therefore, you know, one of the potential outcomes of that is that all ranges are going to change. I mean, whatever is in existence today may not be the result of the study. We don't know. I mean, it's going to take several months here in order to, to do, but I think I would just hope that you would recognize that, at least from the study standpoint, that that uh, that is a potential outcome. Now, I'm going to go back to, to the appeal. I think I think there are enough because now we're at the determined next steps. Uh, I think you, you've done a good job of answering our questions and and expressing what it is that you want. And you would like you indicated that the personnel board, in fact, could perform this independent analysis. Um, so I think what we need to do as a as as, as the personnel board is, is to do that, and that will mean. Um, and I don't know how this gets accomplished. Um, I don't know if it all has to be in a public meeting, not public meeting. Uh, that that I'm not sure, but there's data that the personnel board needs in order to examine questions that will need to be asked of the town uh, as to you know how to interpret that information in order for the personnel board i think to to come up with a with a conclusion uh, as to this particular situation so what i've said jim is there is this does this resonate as a possible Okay, exactly. yep. step with you. Okay, right. Um, I'll speak for everybody, but just me anyway. Can I just um, say something? Sure, sure, sure. What I don't understand is how a certain amount of people got the nine percent. We all work as a family, right? We all do. We all put the lights on. We all pay our bills. We all do. We, everybody does it. We're one unit, right? How can you pick? five, 10 people out of 30 something people and give them 9%. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense to me. I've been there for 34 years. I've seen it, done it. Yeah. Well, I think you raise a very good point. Uh, your first name again was? Ann. Ann. Um, and this is where we on the personnel board are gonna have to ask some questions of the people that have the information. You know, we, we understood that the linemen because we're down so many linemen, need that increase to get people in here to have a full staff. Yeah. We're, we're so concerned about the other people that got it. Right. And not looking at everybody that's in the line department. I understand. And so what you're what what I think you're asking, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but what you're asking for is 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 an, is a better explanation. It's an explanation yeah. that will resonate with you in your long-term service and you know your future long-term service and so forth um but that's what you're that's what you're asking for. That, that's what i think you're asking for and please correct me if that's not the... i agree with that okay okay it's, just, it's not fair yeah so i think um notwithstanding any other points that jim or your your colleagues have or Liz or Nancy, I mean, I think we've we've satisfied the the agenda, which is the presentation and number two, next steps. And the next steps is essentially for the personnel board to act as the independent reviewer uh, of the data and provide its explanation or provide its conclusion based on that. Okay. So unless there's anything else that you guys have i think we've i think we're finished with this particular point. that's it would you like the copies of the absolutely the report? oh yeah yeah absolutely so, so should we confirm a time frame for this review or what well i think we're going to have to um yeah, my, my concern my concern about we need as a three of us or yeah. with 
to to act in an expeditious uh, way, but but based on based on availability, and I think we don't have a good handle. Um, Sooner than later, I hope. Well, I think there's in the process there's some points on times too, right? Well, but we're all you know the, the only thing is we're already at, you know the time the time frame has been altered already. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we, I think we just need to use good judgment right. and uh, our own desire to move this forward. Okay. I mean, I think it rests essentially in our hands. And, right. I think and, we need and the personnel board uh, has, has its sort of uh, charter here to, to respond to Jim and um, the other folks here. I think we need to look at all the data that yeah. will be able to tell us why it was done and uh, give us some ideas so we can come back to you with, with what we can find and take care of. And I would hope we could do that relatively soon rather than have you waiting. I think, personally, I think you did a very nice job putting this together as well as this. I, I found it to be pretty complete of all that you went through. So I would like us to, yeah. you know, it's kind of hard. There's only three of us. And we all have. Um, it's only so many nights in a week, and so we're working at it. But but I I do feel that um, you know we'd like to get back to you sooner than later. So you deserve that. So. And I th I think that that as we all know, when there's a problem or or an issue, whether it's at home or work or in this particular case, there's always sort of two sides, and both sides have to uh, have to be valued and have to be heard. And then there's a body, in this case, just the three of us, who will have to make you know, a determination. Um, and actually, I think, based on what I understand, any, any sort of determination we make is not binding. Is not binding on the town. Correct. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's just a step along the timeline. So, you know, I'm sure you're not looking at us for the, you know, the absolute <laughs> Uh, authority uh, to, to do, but you know, I, I respect the fact that you followed the procedures and you've worked diligently to do that. And then we, as a board, have responsibility to, you know, to obtain information and data from uh, from the town. And uh, specifically, obviously, we'll we'll get most of that from from Amy, uh, but there may be others in the town that have data as well. And I thank you very much for for that because that's a piece of the piece of the work. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank, thank you. you. I just have to get some printouts. Okay. All right. Uh, sure. but okay. I won't be All right. Any of you want to hear more? <laughs> thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Marty, thanks for. Uh, hi, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry if you, if you could just have any speakers if they could they could speak into the mic if they're addressing the committee. That's all. They, they there are others online that can't hear you. That's all. Yeah. But those are important points. I'm I'm taking notes right. for the meeting, so I'll I put those in. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Thanks, Marty. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to move on to uh, the third item on the agenda which is the classification and compensation study. And I guess, Kelly, is this going to be your, uh, are you going to guide us through well, this? Or? We've got a, a, a team approach here. We're going to pass the baton. Um, Amy is going to intro us, and then we'll take it from there, if that's OK. These are all like, right? Okay. Oh, they're all, pardon me. 
It's just one though, right? It's from the just one that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just okay. take, please, just take one and pass it along. Um, through the chair, my name is Kelly Hebert. I'm the interim assistant town manager and also HR um, consultant um, working with Amy Foley. And um, I think that Amy's going to have some remarks to sort of open this up, create a framework for us so we can be as efficient as possible uh, with your time. And um, first, but thank you for taking the time to be here. This is a really important project, as you know, and um, I'm really excited that we've kind of got it off the ground this week uh, with our employee kickoff meeting. So that Amy, was really good. It's yeah. good. Amy? Okay. So um, at the last meeting, I pointed out the sections of the bylaw that we we're working within. Um, so I'm just, you know, circling us back to that some of the things that the personnel board needs to provide guidance on is the selection of comparable communities and the selection of benchmark positions whether it be that you um, review the methodology and the um, the approach and accept the consultants recommendations or if there are particular ones that you want to direct the consultant to give that's kind of where we want to get to this evening is to know how to move forward and keep on the timeline. Um, I'd ask you to consider that if we're not at the end of this meeting at the point where um, all of the comparable communities are identified, that you consider what kind of a vote that you could take. Are there some that you could confirm or would you uh, form a subcommittee or authorize the chair or, or one of you to work with staff and the consultant to finalize within the parameters that that are discussed tonight. Um, so that's what we're trying to get to is how do we move forward as quickly as possible with helping the consultant to go ahead and uh, and send out the surveys, starting to gather that data, um, while also meeting the need for the board to be um, supportive or have, have picked that methodology. So um, that was really all I wanted to say was sort of where we're trying to get to. And then I was going to leave the rest to Kelly. Kelly has been working closely with Joellen Katamatori, and um, who you met to, to go over the details and kind of get input from, from department heads and others about what we know on comparables. So I'm just going to pass it over to Kelly. Thank you. I just handed out, and we will post this as soon as the meeting is over, it's a slightly updated version of what was put into the packet, and I'll sort of walk you through that. Um, why don't I start with um, where we left off at the last meeting, which leads you to the information that was sent out to you um, over the weekend for your review. Um, at the last meeting, we had um, Joellen, our consultant from HR Gov discuss the approach that we were going to use. Um, as you know, she works with, she's worked with dozens of other communities in Massachusetts and across the country. So we really wanted to give her the opportunity as our consultant to come to us with um, her recommendations and her methodology, because you know we, we wanna be obviously involved, we wanna have input, but at the end of the day, we need the consultant to make her recommendations to us so that this process is fair, open, transparent. So um, she sent us, actually, we, we had, we've been exchanging information. At the last time we spoke, we had given her information from 2006, and those were a lot of the communities that were used uh, the last time we did a survey such as this. And just by the looks of that list, um, there were a few that weren't in our new list. So, you know, when you compare those, you wonder, you know, what was the methodology at that time? It was a, it was a while ago, it was a different consultant, um, but it does sort of in, intrigue me and, and it makes you wonder, um, how do you get to these numbers? So, so we've been going back and forth. The list that I just handed out to you is, if I were to timestamp it, this would be for today. The one that you received in your packet was as of last week. Um, this one today, I'll, I'll tell you basically as a quick overview, um, it includes 18 core, we'll call them core or general comparable communities. And what we mean by that is 
essentially that there are a number of criteria, primarily financially based, but, but also very transparent and easy to track from year to year in that we that they're using DOR information. So this is available for all of the communities in Massachusetts. If someone were to say, how did you decide that Sudbury is our very closest comparable, we could say, well, we went to the DOR and we did a data search. And these are the comparables for other communities that have a minimum of 9,000 population, a maximum of 40,000 population, and these are how they scored in the methodology that we've given you in the past really shows how some of those factors are weighted. So we have at this point in time 18 core or general comparison communities, those are based on the highest scores. Um, our list originally it, it goes from 100 being Sudbury all the way down to Lexington which it's it's really difficult to see, I apologize. That was scored at a 69, but I'll, I'll explain. Our original cutoff was actually 80, God bless you. Our original cutoff was at 80, um, because at that point, we actually were able to, um, you know, have a good core group. Our hope is that by identifying 12 to 18 communities, they will do a market survey, and of the up to 18 communities, we will get data back from hopefully at least eight to 12. And so we start with this group, and this is, this is actually a larger uh, sample group than we initially advertised in our RFP. Can I ask you to pause one second? Sure. I think it would be helpful if Chris Carmody could put, the, um, oh, put it up on the board for those. So he has the file, right? Yeah. Zoom this is that possible? I think it was the fourth tab on the file I sent you. The other thing I think would be to uh, do the the color codes, what, what they mean. Yeah. And you've mentioned DOR. And there's also EQD. Oh, yes. I'm not familiar okay. with those acronyms. Yeah. Sorry, I was speaking the wrong language. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. That's alphabet soup. Maybe maybe while we wait for um, him to do that, I can explain what those act, what those initials mean. GOR is the Department of Revenue for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the Division of Local Services actually has a municipal data bank with um, tons of municipal data that you can use, and so that's where this data is extracted from. And I believe there's six to eight data points. EQV meaning um, equalized uh, value. So the value of people's property, we have income per capita. So the income um, per capita, we have um, EQV. So the value per, per person, the assessed value. So these are all the financial indicators that would assess as closely as we possibly can. There's no, there's no, there's no specific exact way to get our comparables. So what we're trying to do is narrow the criteria that we want to use so that we can judge or assess our community's ability to pay. And with the DOR, these are the factors that primarily are being used in our sample group to define what that would be. Does that answer the question about alphabet soup? Because Carrie's always a good person to <laughs> explain what these acronyms mean. Um, are there any other ones up there while we wait for the um, the display that that is that so does that that cover the right it? One? I'm sorry, is that the right one? Yes, yes it oh, is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, okay, so this was color coded by <laughs> this was color coded by our consultant, and the reason I think is because we were trying to we, so we they compiled one list and we said, well, wait a minute, we we have you know we have a challenge here that we have a light plant in our community, and not all of these eighteen communities have a light plant. So what we were doing was going back and forth, trying to decide which ones do have a light plant so that when we get to our light plant um, titles, 
that we have enough of a sample size so that we can compare our light department employees and titles with other comparable communities. And so I think the yellow really signifies what we had in the original list versus what she's recommended where it sort of falls into the new list. And by doing this, we were able to confirm that using these comparatives, we will have at least, um, I think we're up to eight, nine, at least 10 different communities that we could consider for our light plant comparables. Does that the ones clarify in yellow? In yellow. In yellow. Yeah. Well, what is orange then? Okay, so orange, orange is the are the ones that she's added with the scoring that goes along with them because we took a list of all of the communities that also have light plants and we said are there more out there that we can assess for their comparability to us so she has suggested that the ones in orange might be ones we might want to include and i'll tell you one of them is shrewsbury and one of the reasons why we're considering that one is because they also have a broadband component to their department and that might give us more titles so the idea behind this grid what you're looking at now is that you form your 18 communities that's your core and then when we get to the light department we're going to stretch a little bit and we're going to maybe add in the second block of communities to make sure we have enough of a sample group to determine our light department um, positions um, and our comparables. Does that So let me, let me just clarify Please. Uh, for, for my benefit. Um, so you, the, the plan would be to take those municipalities listed under light plant include municipal light, oh, do not include. Well, the um, block. so do not include means do not include they're, they're not going to be this that's is not being recommended for either lighthouse or non lighthouse correct okay so there's 18 in the top and there's one two three four five seven in the municipal light power light plant includes seven so that's 25 obviously yeah is that an acceptable number for hr gov is that too many? Is that? No, that that's, they want more data and they're willing to get it for us, even though it's a little bit more than we initially planned. They're so, willing to do that, yes. So what if for Littleton and Groton, their survey only contained light plant positions? Okay, let me let me take a step back. You're on the right track. And I apologize for that this is a little bit confusing. First block to me is all set. Second block is what's being recommended. The third section where it says do not include is our consultant's recommendation, primarily because of the score at the end. You see that Groton only has a 34, right. Littleton only has a 50. Now, the reason she put that in there was because we are having this conversation about the relevancy of the communities and she didn't want to be too presumptuous and just take it off the list. Um, she's trying to hear the reasons why we or the department head might want to leave it on the list. Perhaps there's something else that we're not aware of. But based on this data and the scoring here, she's saying those last two for Littleton and Groton should not be included. They, they rank too low. See, the, the, the only difficulty I have with that statement, and obviously Joellen's not here to respond mm -hmm. to this, is if somebody is going to come to work for you or leave you, they're not going to look at this list and say, oh, I'm going to go to a 34. I'm not, or I'm not going to go to a 34 city or a 50 city. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's irrelevant, really. If you're looking to change jobs and there is a job in the, the, one of the last two and it's at a pay level that you want, I mean, it's so anyway, my point is that I don't see why one wouldn't think about including the last two, regardless of what the, the score is, because I think that the score is irrelevant here. And just say, okay, we're gonna send out, the survey will be That's just like That's when plant. it gets to be too cumbersome. What she's saying is we have to have a cutoff at some point. And she feels that 14 comparables for our light 
for our light plant positions is more than adequate. And that's why she said, if we have to have a cutoff, I'd suggest that you don't include these other two. What she's saying is everything in yellow and in orange above those last two, it equals 14 comp. She's recommending that we would use those when we look at light plants. If we're not talking about the light plants, we're really looking at the first 18. Those are the core groups. They're going to be used for all of the general job descriptions. Originally, we were only going to do 12 to 14. They're including 18 for us. Mm -hmm. So that is a very good sample size, and it's very reasonable given our time constraints in the project timeline. And again, if we are serving 18 for all of the positions, and we only get 12 to 16 back. Again, that's still plenty of data. You only need really three survey points or three sample points for the data, but we are hoping that we can scoop all of this data up. Also, one of the other reasons is I think that some of these communities, they might have some relevant data so we can utilize some of that and save some time. The only reason we're not looking at a list of 18 is because of the light department. Does that clarify? No. Well, I, I mean, it probably does <laughs> for everybody else but me. But, but of those eighteen, yes, I, I don't even know. I wish there was a name we could give the eight, those eighteen. The, there's the no highest there's, scores, or there's nothing on on this matrix that shows which ones have light plants and which ones don't. The yellow. All the yellow. All, All the yellow. yellow. All yellow. Can you, Kelly? No, that's that's not right. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Wait, so hold on, on. On what I included I'm in the sorry, packet. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. What? How is your list? Did your list include them? Because we're having. It looks like the orange and the yeah. one one yellow. Yeah. There okay. were four at <laughs> least. I'm sorry. Let me go back. Um, the the color coding. Yeah, that's is, why is I, throwing me off. Right. Right. So apologies. It, the ones in the packet, and I can read them off. Are um. A, that are yellow are those with light plants and they did get mi mixed in at one point so i think we yeah let me go through one two three so four, five, six. belmont uh redding yeah wakefield wellesley hingham and marble marblehead danvers hip switch Mansfield, Shrewsbury, Littleton, and Groton. Those are the ones with the light plant. And, then, and that number is one, two, yes. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I have 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have 12 with light plants. <laughs> Uh, what are the other two? Um, so, okay, Belmont, yeah. Reading, Wakefield, and yeah. Wellesley, Wellesley yeah. Hingham, yeah. Marblehead, yeah. Danvers, okay. Ipswich, One, two, three, Mansfield, Look at that, so. Shrewsbury. That's 12. Oh, and then you counted Middleton Littleton and, and Rotten. Rotten. Okay. Right. And I, I, I will just note with Littleton, um, yeah in particular that they service more than the town of Littleton in their light plant. I know they cover Boxborough. I don't remember Do they? if it goes further than that. So I think that's something that we need to talk about with Joelle and as well is that that population isn't, you know, that works for municipal positions, but for the uh, light plant, we may need to look a little further to consider the comparability of that. Would but look further. What? How do you define? At the look numbers. Further? Well, we may just need to discuss that. That's relevant. It's close to us in um, geographically, right. and even though it might not score as high in this matrix, I think we'd re want to reconsider whether this matrix applies in that case because the pop it uses population, but it doesn't mix in um, what's population of Boxborough, for example, but if it's multiple towns. So I, I think there just needs, if there's a core group of towns that you can use the points for, and then we need to look further than that to see what does this not represent? And for the light plants, I think Littleton may be one of them that we should be discussing. Um, and I think, I think uh, 
rotten is one we've looked at before as, as well for light plants alone. Well, Groton was on the previous list right. in 2007. Right. Um, there's several that were on. Right. But, mm -hmm. but I think uh, Littleton, um, you know, as far as the per capita money and um, population um, and the assessed value, you know, they're much lower, but I, I would assume that might reflect on the pay scale of employees mm -hmm. as well. So if that's the reason and their points are so low. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I obviously I'm not a great fan of using total points here because I don't I don't know what it means. And um, I mean, obviously, I can figure out how you got there, but yeah. you're looking to hire somebody and that person is not in one of those cities, well, it doesn't in any way validate that person is a good candidate or not, or somebody's going to want to leave. And, and so I'm just, and I think it's, it's more important and maybe, um, maybe I'm not giving it enough credit, but uh, I, um, no. I don't have any difficulty with those 18 being, um, being municipalities that we should survey. Um, I don't, again, I'm not sure if that's too many. I don't know what we're, what our objective is, Kelly. I don't know. I'm, I'm losing a little. I, I'm, I'm looking for, well, we're looking for um, your blessing. Um, we're, we're looking for your agreement with the methodology being used. Let's just stick with the 18 for the moment. We're looking for your agreement or disagreement um, with respect to the core group of comparables being um, those top 18, let's start there. Does that make sense based on the methodology that we've been presented with and the scoring mechanism? And if it doesn't, well, let's just take it from there. Are there any issues with um, agreeing to these 18 as our general compensation communities? Can I, can I add something here? So Bill, um, you're, you're coming at this, if I understand correctly, trying to understand where individuals who are looking for employment or for furthering their career might comparably go. And you're looking to understand why they would go there. It's not based on this and what's the value of land. It's based on what the salary is. Right. So, so from the person's pers individual perspective of where would I choose to work, they don't care if Concord has a higher income per right. capita or right. not. And right. so, so that's one side of the issue, which I think is relevant. And the other side of the issue, if I understand correctly, is that if there's a higher per capita, then there's more ability to pay higher salaries. So the assumption is that if you go to those areas and you choose these communities based on the criteria that, that I think we need to get to on the top line, um, then they, we should be saying, well, if they're paying that much in that town, and that's where their kind of standard of living is, mm -hmm. then we should pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. So then the issue is if Groton, it, their per capita income is so much lower, they probably are paying lower and then we'd be setting our, our payments scale too low and we won't attract people. And so that's a problem because the community in Groton isn't going to pay as much is the underlying assumption. Now, maybe we need to see that. And I have a, so those are two avenues of questioning that we have to follow through here tonight, mm -hmm. right? Um, I have another thing to add into the confusion. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but I want to understand what comes from the DOR, the Department of Revenue for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts their comparable municipal database that's available to towns, right? And available to, of course, GovHR um, to use. And then as we discussed last meeting, there's another piece of this work where they're going to go more in depth and do some interviewing of individuals and town officials across these 18 communities, which would then be much more cumbersome if we give them 25. That's the piece, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, no. yes. I mean, well, we're not, I'm not saying we're going to give them 25, but if they're going to interview no, they're still in the towns. No, we're that's not, not correct. We're not. They're not. So no. they're only using Department of Revenue, Commonwealth of Massachusetts database to get this data that we're looking at here. To come up with the comparable communities. And they're looking for the town's ability to pay as that source of determining why these are relevant. Because if we just wanted to be the most competitive in our pay, we would go to Cambridge or we would go to Boston. We, we would go to all the rich communities, so to speak. And um, so this really is a balance of ability to pay balanced with population uh, value of the property uh, per capita. Um, let me see, so your EQ, EQV per capita. And all of those are weighted yeah, based on their so methodology. So EQV has to stand for something specific. It's the it's the average value of the well, property value a, for and it needs a Q and it needs a V. So um, what's that? It's equalized. 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 Community Portion value, is that it? Yeah, I don't know what the Q is. Community? Is. I know it's equalized value. I don't know if the EQ is equal or I mean, I can look it up. Okay. EQV. It's that would so help me to understand. The alphabet soup. Yeah. And, and the bottom line is to put all of this together so we will have an idea of where our compensation should be for the class, for the class, for compensation should be for the classification of different jobs. This so yes, looking this for will be this used for market value. Yes, yes, okay. So we're we're not going to go to Groton right. for the same reasons you brought up. We're right. also not going to go to Cambridge for the same reasons we just talked about. Right. And this is really the the methodology that they've used on dozens, hundreds of communities, and that's why they use this as the starting point. Right. You'll notice though that on the list is um, Lexington. Now that that scored a little lower. The reason that was put in there was because of the discussions we've been having about the relevancy, the proximity of Lexington, sort of the, you know, the comparative nature that we follow here in Concord. Now, so that was added and that will have a notation with it that says, you know, added by the request of the client, if in fact you feel that that is a community that we would like to use as one of our comparables, because for what you said, Bill, that you know someone who's working here might be lured away by a salary in, in Lexington. So we're adding it in here for that reason. We're not including Carlisle though, because the demographics in Carlisle are less than 9,000 in population yeah. and all of those other financial factors are much lower and they did not score um, high enough. So we're including everything from 100 down to 80 plus Lexington is is what there is what GovHR is recommending for us for our comparable communities. They will go to each one of them. They will give them a survey with a number of titles. They will respond, give them the data, and out of the 18, perhaps only 12 have a title like administrative assist, senior administrative assistant. There will be some holes, maybe some communities don't have a senior administrative assistant, but they have an administrative assistant. So what they'll do is they'll compile all that data and you'll see on the 18 different communities who has a similar benchmark title. They will compile all that information. They'll use the minimum, the mid and the max of their range. And that's where they come up with their range that they will recommend for the market rate and then that's how that market survey comes into play. But alongside that is what you just described. It's the classification, it's the job analysis, it's looking at the job. Maybe maybe our senior administrative assistant does just as much as the executive assistant in um, Lexington. That's where they look at the, the more specifics of the job, what's in you know the scoring of that job so that's another process in itself that's but in that whole yeah packet the packet. that we saw that is very complete yes yeah. okay you know, one of the one of the difficulties i think one has any company has any municipality has is this this data isn't science this data right. if, if you're in carlisle 
And Carlisle has a job mm -hmm. that is for five of what somebody in five different jobs in Concord does, but it's all in Carlisle and one person. Mm -hmm. Then that job is going to be that per, that person or that job is going to get paid a lot more. Oh, right, right. Because that Carlisle has decided yeah. they got you know five different areas of responsibility will go to one person. Right. So, so I, that my point is this isn't science. Um, otherwise, you'd be able to have an algorithm that probably mm -hmm. figured all that out. Right. And so you know there's there's judgment that has to be uh, has to be used. I don't have a problem personally of saying those top eighteen. That are listed here, you know. Let's go for it. Let's yeah. let's. I mean, let's all accept. this research has been done on them, so I mean, it certainly makes sense to me. I think there's discussion we need on the on the the, the two groups below, but mm -hmm. at least as a starting point, I don't have an issue with accepting the top eighteen as municipalities that we should accept in this study. Just as clarification, equalized valuations eqv so equalize valuations and that in itself is a statistical analysis like that is one of the statistics that the state uses to be able to compare one community to the next so that term and all that that criteria in itself is also used by the state um so i think it's interesting but that's definitely why it's worked in here but so we've all I've learned. I know it was valuation. It's the value of the property, um, you know, as a whole or by capita. It's EQ -E? equalized. Yeah. Valuation. So is valuation equalized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. So I, I have, um, it, you know, you sparked me to have more questions now, Bill, because. <laughs> um, I, you know, the point system and we're, we haven't, I'd like to walk across the categories. Okay. Yeah. So we've gotten, we know population income per capita and Concord being on the top, top line there. And now we know it's equalized valuation per capita. So this is, um, but it's, this is about land, the equalized per capita valuation of land is it a valuation of so i'm still not clear it's the value of the land divided by the population gives you this number all right uh, it's a metric that the state uses to compare communities to one another you all by oh. the population all right okay and as bill just said i I'm not going to get all of my comments in the notes. I miss a lot of what I say, but I, but I, I, um, I, it's not, it's not a science. This is a judgment, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to spin these things, exactly. right? Yeah. Equalized valuation and the value of the land divided by a population that's relatively or comparably smaller, right? We're at about 18, 18491, right? Um, so, 18,000 and then, um, you know, up to 35 with Lexington, et cetera. So, um, yeah, the, the EQV, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a judgment. It, it's not, and that's a data point in, 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 you know, in, yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. So yeah. let's keep going across assessed value. So the assessed value of, oh gosh, you know, I just realized what? my issue is that this is so small. That's why I'm having such It's up on the screen trouble. too. I, I have a tab which has a scoring key and I'm just gonna look at that really quick because I think there might be some more information there. It's just so buffering. What's the total assessed value in the community in millions? In millions. So for concrete, 6.8 billion is the total assessed value. Oh, the so property. if somebody was going to buy, buy Conkers, yes. <laughs> it wouldn't be, what was it, $2 Very an rich. acre? There's nothing yeah. under a million now <laughs> in my West Concord neighborhoods. There's yeah. nothing under yeah. a million. 
So maybe one every once in a while is 900 and something. So, so I was, I was in the pharma industry, right? And, and pricing in pharma works this way too, right? Because you assess things versus what's already on the market and then everything keeps going up. And this is what's happening here too, right? I mean, because we're talking about salaries in the end, I understand that we have to do that, right? Um, but, but I'm with Bill with this idea that <laughs> judgment okay so the assessed value if somebody wanted to buy Concord they'd have to spend a lot of money maybe <laughs> only a few of our crazy wealthy people in America could do that and so we're not for sale right not but for sale. we're not for sale <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so that's the assessed value let's keep going tax levy we understand that's yeah. pretty clear total budget that's the budget that the town has right yes um to manage and um, that, and okay, so, so that's clear. We're not, um, look at, I mean, I'm going right down to Needham and Lexington because they're, you know, that's, um, yeah. So they have 32,000 people versus our 18,000. And for Lexington, they've got almost, well, at least one and a half times as much, right? Mm -hmm. um, state aid, do we get a lot of state aid? Not really. No, no, proximity, no. okay, so proximity, I understand, and it has a lower point value. So it is a weighted yes. assessment with yes. these point values as yes. they go across. Yeah. Okay. And that's why our, um, because we don't receive a lot of state aid, which is why we only give that five points in the weighting, mm -hmm. as opposed to 15 points with many of the other metrics mm -hmm. all right and lexington has a lower point value on total budget because there's so much larger than the budget available in concord that they should not be considered strongly comp a comp a comparable town because they have so much more money to work with i'd assume does that make, that that make sense right mm -hmm. okay yeah, they are one of the ones that are closer to us in terms of commuting distance and mm -hmm. have positions that may be more like some of ours than yep. a few of these others right. um, that have smaller employee groups or less complex mm -hmm. operations. So it is a combination of data and judgment yep. of, of, right. of kind mm -hmm. of figuring out what makes sense. Where's Is there any uh, database out there that lists employees by city numbers exempted or, we, or we I know we non-union that would be so wonderful <laughs> so, there's not, so the answer is no no not a reliable the places that have it is again the the, cons the problem is people count them differently, differently. yeah and, I, I you know, understand yeah. We, can, yeah. yeah we we've been not a science discussing that back and forth with a lot of um our smt members and talking about that, it be, it, it, how it relates to complexity of the organization. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we've been saying is, okay, these are separate processes. It's, it's a big puzzle that needs to be put together, but during the job analysis is really when you would maybe talk about that complexity and where that scoring would come into play mm -hmm. with the um, job analysis process and the classification. Um, I was I was intrigued that Lexington wasn't on this list. I was really surprised. And even looking at Sudbury, which is 100, it got 100 points. Even mm -hmm. that, though, is only given an eight on, you know, proximity. So, you, you know, it's, Wait, it's no, a mix. No, sorry, that's, that's a misreading. It's How a many mix. miles away is the proximity? Oh, is that? That's just see, miles. I, I need to get better glasses. So they got oh, five points that's out what of five I tonight. for that. That's, that's <laughs> they got five points. That's right. Yeah. And they're eight miles away. My apologies. Yeah, and they again. got 100 because they got 15, 15 when I it was need, written. I need yeah. glasses. That's what I just learned. So thank you. So that's the methodology behind it. So w with what we just talked about, I'm just wondering if if the board feels comfortable with even just this this part, the main, the, the, the core comparables are general comparables um, so that, you know, we can then focus on other pieces such as the light plant. So again, yeah. with, we're talking the 18, the top. Correct, top, top blocking, Which yes. is number eight, which has a total of 18. 
Um, okay, so what about? I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe it's getting later and I'm getting grouchy or something. So I apologize if I have too many questions. I'm getting blind over um, But given that, the top 18 are in the top bucket there, right? The Correct. Yes. And, and that only allows for four for the light comparison, right? So it's the yes. next bunch, the next tranche of that really pulls in more light plants. So why aren't we doing, are and we not that's doing That's the those? suggestion, right? Is we well, use those two, at least for the light plant. Is that right? The next six. Yes. Yeah. The suggestion is we, on top of those four that are up above, yeah. we're also going to add the next six, right. that second block. Right. So we would have a total of 10 comp communities to do that light include on, light, okay. light plants. All right. Would you also use those, um, the ones that have the light plant down below, those six, in with the other 10 for comparison of other stuff? Honestly, I think we have enough of a sample group. Okay. I think one of the only reasons we might want to put that in is, is if there was the a strong plant. feed, you know, okay. if there was really strong evidence that we really needed those extra two comps. Okay. But I'm I, I'm tending just to go along with what the consultant is telling us is the, the right number. All right. They ought to know. I don't yeah. And the thing about Levelton is geographics and um you know, not all of these are very near us. So I'd like to discuss that a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to whatever. We just wanted right. to get a sense of you during the meeting so we can yeah. make some and final decisions. What, is in Littleton what I was trying Boxborough? to do. Is there another? I think it's those two, but I, you know, I know that those are ones that we had looked at before and, mm -hmm. and I just want to be careful not to automatically exclude them. So I'd like to ideally okay. yeah. make this Good. meeting with the ability okay. to add those in if after final discussion it makes sense to put them in put them as a maybe but i'm going to go back to just clarifying <laughs> that second group one two three four five six is the survey jobs would it be the same jobs that are in the top 18 so we're not we're not zeroing in on just light plant positions with those six. Yes, correct? we are. We we only are zeroing We're only in. bringing those in because we need more light plants. Okay, but will a survey that's sent to those communities only have light plant positions? Yes, yes. Okay, because that, that was not, I wasn't clear on that. So. So only light plant positions will be just will be sent to those those six communities. You know, and I don't see any reason why why we wouldn't include Littleton and Groton. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's 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 not like it's there's yeah. 25 jobs in the light plant. Right. I mean, it's well, there are 30. We found out. <laughs> no, no, no. In in, in Littleton and, oh, and Groton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean. It, it, we're gonna I mean, have it, Amy go ahead and look look to make to see if they can be added on is that yeah yeah we're gonna we'd like to leave it open so that we can make sure we make a informed decision with right. all the factors right. Okay. right so perhaps the board could confirm a minimum group and then um authorize the chair to work with staff to make any other additions okay. as, as after discussion with the consultant with some additional that would be um, right. If it turns out to be both feasible, feasible and reasonable as we continue the discussions and get the rest of the information. So I, I, um, I'm still back on the, where you know the specific points that are here, and I have a couple of additional questions, and I'm trying to capture. I'll, I'll add in later that I agree with what you've just stated. So the, you know, to hold on. The, the Littleton Groton not say they're off categorically off the table. I agree with that comment. Okay. Um, now, if we go back through now that we've talked about all of these, so we have obviously um, income income per capita, population size, tax levy. Those are three that I think automatically yes, those are important. Um, and total budget available, I think is important. State aid, I agree with that one. Proximity, I'll put a small check mark for my opinion, but I agree that that um, and Bill, this gets to your point where are employees looking right they're probably looking close by assess value of the total town, none of these towns are going to be sold I don't know why we need to have that as a 
as one of the data points. Um, this is a, a real estate market push in that that puts that into this. And I think that's not really relevant to assessing um, this. So I, I wonder why we have to use that. And let's go back and I want to make sure I use this properly. The equalized valuation, the value of the land divided by the population. I would also really question that because I think that the van, it's the same point I've made with the assessed value. That these are, you know, land values to get them integrated in when we're, we're so that's sort of, I've written down a circle on my notes and there's another circle which we haven't addressed in the points um, that are brought up. This is all about what can we do and the parameters of that, right? And that's fine. And I think that's probably where we'll end up using the parameters of what's available given the wealth of the town and the tax base, et cetera. Um, but Bill, you brought this in, in a sense, when you said, but where will people choose to go? Mm. Well, one of the things that's become very clear is that a lot of the workers in the town aren't able able to choose to live in the town, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. is there another bucket of assessment points that GovHR has used in other circumstances that aren't just aren't presented to us? And could they be replacing EQV per capita and assessed value? It's a question. I'm not saying I'm demanding that happen, but I would like to see what are the other evaluations and that gets us right back to what's available with Department of Revenue of Commonwealth of Massachusetts database right it's a municipal database, it must have other points. And um, GovHR is recommending these points are chosen, um, but I would say at least those two i'd like to see what alternative uh, assessments could could be made, I mean we, we you know one of the things that's going on right now in Massachusetts and around the country is, you know, what is, where do salaries lie, right? I mean, the, the, there's, there's a whole different discussion than the one we're having. It's around salaries and, and where's, um, what's it called, the minimum wage and all that, right? Um, and I think that's also part of this, discussion somehow but i don't i don't see that here on the table on 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 the page uh, may i just make one clarifying remark I, to my knowledge and and they use the same algorithm in many communities so i don't want to speak for them the way that i understood these to be relevant is because they both speak to the ability of the town not only just to pay a salary mm -hmm. but to raise the revenue and the tax revenue that is necessary to support this ability to pay. Yeah. And those are the factors. So while it might be difficult to understand why the value of someone's land has anything to do with our what we give for our salaries, it does have something to do with the larger picture, which is the town's ability to um, create a sustainable revenue base that can support these decisions those, and our discussion. So that was just my take on it. I'm not yeah. the one to speak to those particular points. I don't believe that they use any alternatives to those. I can certainly ask. So so um, to that point, tax levy and total budget mm -hmm. already cover the points that you just made, right? So the valuation Partially. of the whole town, if yeah. it were to be sold, is already, um, and the EQV per capita, that's already represented here by tax levy and the total budget. And so we're giving more points. So weighting that valuation much more heavily. And I'm asking to see what are some other valuation points that would you know, come from a different arena. So what we're doing right now is we're saying, what can the town manage? Mm -hmm. And we're putting a lot of weight on that by a lot of different factors that are reasonable and necessary. And then there are two where I'd say, are there alternative data uh, data points that we would want to include and put give them some weight in the overall hundred points? What right. what I think what I think our consultant would say is, or what I might 
ask them to do is, you know what, why don't you take those out of there? Take the 30 points, distribute it amongst the other ones, see what it looks like. Mm-hmm. It may come up with the same exact distribution. Right. I because don't know. You're that. not adding a new Correct. criteria. You're just redistributing Correct. the points. So but that's I'm, not the same thing as what I'm asking. I, I agree, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with any of the points that you just made. I, I understand that. Um I guess I'm I'm just um I'm not quite sure without Joellen being here how to best define the reason or the rationale why they feel that this is the right formula for their methodology. This is the methodology that they use and have had success with. And so to tinker with that, now it's something we could look at just out of curiosity, but- um, You don't want to tinker with it overall, but so- Yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure if I have that ability to say, oh, let's change the algorithm you've been using. I I understand. You know what I mean? Maybe that this is, you guys all know differently than me, but I I think this is the cart before the horse. This is the first time we've finally seen what the criteria are to get to the point system, and it's a done deal. And I I feel very uncomfortable with that. I think that they should have given this to us last week, and we didn't see this in our last meeting. And this point system is what we should have been talking about. And for me, you know, that I'd like to understand what are some other alternatives that, you know, for, for their, for algorithm is a big word, but it's not that complicated to, mm-hmm. to shift the algorithm so that the points that they analyze take into consideration some other evaluations. And in my mind, those two are the ones I'd question. Now, will it come up that we are looking at comps in Massachusetts with towns of uh, approximately the same size, same per capita, and budget available? It probably those are the three main criteria anyway. Um, but I do want to point out that I, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not in agreement with their algorithm. Well, did, I did get this in the back of before but we didn't have time to discuss it, it no wasn't. no we didn't have time to discuss it but um i did look at it i didn't pick yeah. it apart like that but um so and this was the meeting set up to pick it apart right i mean that's what my understanding was it's, 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 that's what we're doing oh, okay. i mean i, I think that oh, okay. um, that's I that's important i'm putting that in the yeah, notes I, nancy's yeah. okay with this algorithm because you know that's it's not my decision i'm just pointing out where i'm uncomfortable that's all can i note a couple things that aren't you know this isn't meant to sway you one way or another but some observations um each of the consultants in the studies that i have been here for um have used similar types of methodology not exactly the same but there are some common common factors here and the overlap of communities that they have recommended as comparable is pretty considerable. So using somewhat different methods, we continue to identify most of the same um, communities. They're also similar to the communities that when I'm talking with department heads about uh, communities that have positions like theirs, these are the ones that most commonly come up. We have been asking uh, for that input from department heads this week to say, who are we missing? Who do you consider as your competition or what, um, what, yeah, where are people going to or who has operations like yours to see? Is there anybody that's any town not on this list that you are surprised Mm -hmm. to say, well, we should have gotten that. And so Kelly's been gathering that data and that's also been something that's part of the discussion with um with the consultants and as part of even why i'm saying let's hold on to some of these i think we need to continue that and keep continue to hear you know there might be a core set but i think we need to continue to identify if there are some others that that we need to get data from so again i'm not trying to say that we don't you know don't go down the path of more data but i just wanted you to be aware that there's some consistency here in the communities that we keep uh, identifying you know, from my my experience, which is not municipal, obviously based, is um, in the private sector. When I was sitting down to figure out which were the comparable 
and I worked in a place where you know you had to wear a lot of different hats. I didn't have eight factors. I didn't use eight factors. So that, that's what that's what is currently being you know presented here. Um, I have three or four. Now that doesn't make my doesn't make I guess the result that I came up with any better or not as good as having eight factors. Um, I, I, I counted the number of 15 points in the, uh, what is it, is the, uh, I guess, the EQV, and of the 24, 15, 14 of those have 15 points. So, and, and in the category of assessed value, 16 have 15 points. So if you take out those two uh, columns and just say, okay, we're only going to have six factors, because six factors will still give us a good uh, basis for listing our uh, for for agreeing on comparable communities. Um, it's going to be roughly the same, in my opinion. So I'm not as concerned about making certain that we take out two categories and then okay, if we're going to take out two, we need to add two because I'm not sure, um, and I'd need Liz to help amplify the two that she would add as being determinative of you know making any difference since this is a judgment call in the first place i think that's an excellent point they all got 15 or almost it doesn't change the the evaluation right. overall yeah. 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 yeah i i definitely do what i'm curious about and i think maybe that's the last question i'll leave is what are some other things that are in the database that we're not privy to? Sure. I think this is the database early on. I asked if I could take a look at it, and they said go to oh, to yeah. Amy. No, it just uh, isn't the same. No, no, no. So, but I, I'm curious about what else is in that database that could be used as comp points that we're not seeing because we're we're presented only the finished of what they've already used in the past and as bill's just rightly pointed out two of them don't make a big difference anyway and i think you i think that's where we should end and then i would conclude i think the algorithm is a little hokey yeah. but i agree with the the community's chosen how about that is that okay with yeah, everyone well, that's, i mean I, I want to value and honor your position because you know you have a you have a, a different sort of sense and ability about how to look at data and how to you know how to how to interpret data so to speak and I don't disagree at all with what you said it's just that what does it mean in the end what does it mean yeah. in the end yeah yeah and, and that's that is a maybe a little bit too pragmatic but it's just <laughs> it's it's just and again, I'm using my own experience of, you know, I, I had data, pharmaceutical data, medical device data, and there was like three or four categories or three or four criteria. And I said, okay, you know, that's gonna do what I need to, need to do. Yeah. And, um, and these were obviously the population sizes mm -hmm. were sufficient in order to have a viable statistical um, um, end viable statistical meaning so anyway that's, that's enough enough said I think are we at a point where we need to have a are we still are we maybe we're still in discussion I don't want to cut off discussion at this point I'm I'm okay and I'll tell you um there's some stuff in there that <clears throat> I probably uh, agree but to me I'm looking at the basic things I've done a lot of things but I've done it with uh, independent assisted and memory support and looking at other communities so it's I wouldn't be looking at some of that stuff, but I do feel that these communities, particularly the light plants and the stuff we're going to look at. I also have to say that we did hire gov <laughs> HR USA they have done so much of this um, and so i'm hoping that I feel that comfortable with what they've chosen um, and looking at these I. I think they're all in the right category, and I think we should get enough information from them. So I'm okay with this. I'm not disputing anything that you said about the stuff up above, a couple of the areas, because I'm not, that's not my thing. But 
I did look at all the numbers and stuff on the side and stuff, so I'm okay with it. I just would like to <clears throat> move forward if, if it's possible, you know. So Nancy, not to put words in your in your mouth, but are you comfortable with the 18 plus the six to make it 24? Is that what you're comfortable right, with? Right, yeah, I'm comfortable with the basically, top group and, yep, the, and, and the also because I want to get okay. the light plant stuff in there. Okay. And I would like to see Amy look at Littleton and Groton because they may actually, they're so close. Littleton does have a great department. I would assume that they're like, they must, I assume that they pay, must pay fairly well, but I have no idea. Um, but I would like to include everything, but in different ways, the light plants separate. Is that what you were going to do anyways? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we yeah. proposed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if, if the board can confirm a core group, say that the top group and the second tier for light plant and leave some discretion to the consultant and staff and if, if you want to have a liaison to add some additional if it's determined that that would be um, helpful in rounding okay. out. Rounding right. out the data gathering and remember when after we get the data, then there's a decision on taking a look at it and how relevant is it once we see it right but. Um, All right, so do you want to make a motion. Yeah. I motion we accept the recommendations of the towns, the municipalities listed, okay. uh, including the first 18 assessment on the light um, plant review to include the additional six and an open res uh, question on Littleton and Groton, so they're not off the table, but they would I don't know how to leave that open question, <laughs> but that okay. that's my recommendation. I, I second that. All right, so we have a we have a motion. Excuse me, in a second. Um, I'm not going to be able to restate the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Did you type it and then read it back? <laughs> and and it's so declared. And Bill, <laughs> I'll just know you have. Um, five participants or well four i don't know it was just coming up oh, and I if know. there was any point that you wanted any other discussion or public comment you could either do it now or after a vote or well i mean oh. if we have any public comment um let's see we've got a few people you know, it looks like mr perry has raised. raised his hand so why don't we well I'll, i will uh, recognize mr perry thank you mr Morajek. ned perry 362 bedford street um, having worked for a classification compensation um, company, um, I was particularly interested in this whole process in 2007. And um, I note uh, you, you've had a great discussion and, 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 and uh, really good um, uh, points raised. Um, I note uh, in, instead of a good overlap, there's actually only half overlap of the 18 towns at the top of the chart here only nine of them were included in the 2007 survey so there's not really particularly good overlap based upon my knowledge of our town staff and um, over the years where they've come from and gone to i would um respectfully suggests that Burlington and Wakefield are not particularly comparable to Concord, but that Natick and Andover are comparable. I, I, I believe Natick has always been held up as one of the towns that is most is closest to Concord. And we have compared salaries with Natick over the years quite a bit. Now, Amy's a professional, so I totally defer to her. She's been uh, here um, not quite as long as I have, but in her job uh, much longer than I was. Uh, so I would I would delete Burlington and Wakefield, and I'd add Natick. Or I'd I'd respectfully suggest that the consultant and Amy um, look at why Burlington and Wakefield, with uh, 
far less per capita income um, uh, be included. And I'd rather suggest that Andover and Natick that have taken employees from us um, be included in the, in the chart. Thank you very much for the time, Mr. Chair. Good luck. It's well, very, imp very important that we get this done and uh, good for the personnel board for moving it forward. Thank you. Just add, thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Can we nice, just... uh, nice, helpful comments. Thank you. Those were very helpful. Thank you. And um, and yes, I appreciate that because I'm realizing that the list that went out with the packet um, had Natick and Andover and actually Westboro and Chelmsford on it, which are some of the ones that I um, I haven't been in all of the discussions with with Joellen and um, Kelly, but did want to follow up on right. so i'm sorry i didn't realize fully that those weren't weren't on here but that is exactly why i'm continuing to say i'd like the ability to add some because i think there's some more discussion to have and i am concerned about any that we've identified before i particularly i've said natick a couple times as well yeah. that i think i think we should um burlington and some of the smaller i would like to talk about a little bit further ones that really weren't um, as much of an issue before they've been, you know, either growing or adding more positions like ours. And I think it's just worth a little bit more discussion um, for the future. So does that uh, give you the uh, opportunity to look at others cover Natick and Andover as well? Yes, yeah. that's okay. where I, okay. right. That was my okay. intent. And I'm so, um, one, one other thing that we really didn't get to discuss, but it's sort of that hanging chat, if you will, is um, our water sewer department, because it's an enterprise, we might have the same sort of challenge with making sure that we have enough of a sample and data group to fairly represent other towns that also have a water sewer enterprise. So that was one of the, the um, discussion points that we just kind of identified today and also during the back and forth with our uh, senior management team. You know, is is that a relevant factor? And the reason I just thought of it now is because I believe that some of the communities that were just brought up by Mr. Perry might be in that, that subset group. And I don't know what we're supposed to do with that at this point, except I just mentioned it to you as one of the other components of this discussion that we do need to dig a little bit deeper, get a little bit more detail from our consultant on, just in case I just don't want there to be this illusion that we're just picking this stuff out of nowhere. I wanted to mention that that might be one of the other unique situations um, similar to the light plant. So yeah, I have a can I, oh, go ahead. comment. Um, that makes me a bit nervous. I'm absolutely fine to keep that door open. Mm -hmm. But the, I, the goal here of this meeting was that we would finalized and give you yes. some help to, for direction yes. to get them going. And then in in just a few minutes, we've added two or three more towns. I'm not sure why Chelmsford got taken off the list that we're seeing here tonight versus. Um, so that's a question which is allowed, I guess, with this open door that we might change more. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm suggesting um, is that... No, sorry, I'm not... I mean, that, just to, to make my point more clear, so those towns and then the addition of your comment that water and sewer is in the same situation potentially as the plant, the light plant, but we don't have any color coding on where those exist. So I don't think we're ready for a decision. I, I said yes, but I mean, that makes me a bit nervous because we had started this meeting with some people that were very unhappy with how they were treated and I, that could come again at the end of this center wor work if the water sewer enterprise goes through the same so those are process. Those are excellent points. I'm just, these are one of the, the uh, points that I want to discuss and Joellen is here tomorrow as well. Okay. So there may not be an issue. I'm just trying to be yeah. very honest and, and forthright with, these are some of the issues right. that we might, ordinarily we might not have even realized that right. there could be an issue. We're just having gone through this process before and, and hearing these comments, it just makes you right. think about any other potential. Um, but Kelly, that's why you're so important to this, is flagging that so yes. that we don't go ahead with the wrong communities. Correct. Right, so yes. thank you for that. 
Yeah. This is, I mean, and, and you, the, the point that you've raised, I think and Liz has, has commented on, I, you know, I, I don't think we're ready to, to come up with a final list. Now, I don't know if you're, if plan B is, well, you know, can you pick six or seven municipalities that you're really comfortable with? I, I don't know, I don't know what plan B is, mm. other than we, we wait until we're a little bit better we have more knowledge and we were that, or, I, you, or, yes. you, or can you i mean stark is the what i heard you say is that we you might add more on that we would look at but is there a starting point where you could at least start with these yes to get going absolutely and then add the ones that you felt were necessary so we well, could I'm still much more money with that cost we'll have well we're going to have another no, no more money. Sorry, Sorry what I'm what I'm I'm just thinking out loud. What I guess what I was going to go to or is in my head is is when will we meet again? Because if let's say the personnel board has a plan to meet in two weeks, um, you know I can certainly um, bring further information. We're going to speak with Joellen tomorrow. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into this other question, which is, do we have enough already with all of the communities? Is there enough representation that includes other water sewer plants? Because that was something that just, you know, came up as a result of us talking about the light plant. That's great. And so we're going to delve into that a little bit. And so I should have some more information about that in the next day or two. So I just want to lay out sort of what some of the other pieces are to this puzzle and it's for you as a board to decide at what point do we want to meet again so that you all feel comfortable with us moving forward but to your point this core this core group of of communities the 18 um is is a really great place for them to start i don't think that they're going to start surveying people tomorrow in fact we still have some steps left to do we have to draft the survey, we have to decide who we're going to, who Amy and I are going to call on the phone and say, hey, can you really, can you do the survey for us? And, um, you know, just to get that feedback. So we're certainly, we're at the beginning of this process, and we appreciate that you're willing to give us this kind of feedback because it's going to make for a better end product. So I'm asking you, I guess, you know, how would you like to go forward and at what point we should revisit some of these you know some of the unanswered questions I want to have the the uh, cost is there any cost that's going to be incurred by adding more than uh, 25 26 municipalities is there any cost at this point the answer is no okay so that's an important for me that's an important point so we could go ahead accept the uh 24 that are here actually i guess it would be 24 26 20 27 i mean but to leave the fact that the motion would state again that allow for there to be additions to this list and i think the personnel board you know somebody on the personnel board should be um, has to approve that as well i mean it's a not I know what the right words are here uh, but um that that's one way to approach this is that we, we essentially say we've got 18 and six and i'm going to say two which is going to be 26 that's everybody on this list mm -hmm. with the understanding that the, the 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 chair along with amy or whatever the consultant ellie uh, has the discretion to add or subtract and you might wind up adding natick and andover yes. and not using the Littleton and Groton, or I mean, who knows, or whatever. So well, if we come up with a number, yeah, I, I think you're right. Yes. If we come up with a number with some discretion, right? 
with advice or an advisory okay from the personnel board chair, let's say, then I think we're we're set to go. Yeah. Um, it's not another wrench, I promise. <laughs> but um, I thought that Mr. Perry's comment that there are towns that take our employees right. leads to what I, I mentioned, I put a circle. What can the town afford? The other circle is what can what do we have to address? And that might be a nice point. I bet the database doesn't have that point. Where does one employee go to another town and so on? But if there is a judgment call here, and there are towns that HR can understand, where do people go? I don't know how deep the exit interviews go and all that kind of thing. But over time, is there a trend? Is there a recent trend in towns? Mm -hmm. Uh, we have empty positions, right, in town. Is that how Natick and Andover came up? That they were right. That's what Mr. That, Perry was talking about, right? Yeah, that that's what that we have had. had. Interesting. But um, hmm. right. are there other towns, and is it only based on money, or you know? No. Well, well, one of the interesting things that's happened through the years is that the towns that we never would have considered our competition can suddenly uh, <laughs> scrape up lots of money to pay a particular position, you know, an engineer or something. They don't have as many positions. They were never, you know, they're not even, um, they don't even have a position that's as wide a scope as ours, but the competition is so stiff that they might say, well, we're going to really pay for that one and they're doing a personal contract or something. So I, I've seen things that I hadn't seen before. Um, you know, so any of them could, could draw our employees, but I think it goes back to are there trends, are there particular types of employees? Like Needham is one that I often hear people talking about as they think of that as the competition, for example, or that has, has a number of positions. Okay, that okay now that to. you've mentioned Needham, I, I'm okay. familiar with that with family members there. I, I'm relatively familiar with what's going on there in mm -hmm. government and so forth. So I'll, I'll put out this very wacky comment. I'm not gonna put it in the meeting minutes. Um, because what you've reminded me of is sitting at a science and tech meeting in Kyoto, Japan, with, which was an international meeting in Lithuania, of all places, had um, made their whole, all of their cities free and open internet like 20 years before any other community did that. And they are quite successful economically today. And that was part of it. All right, so they did something. And the, the link here to what you've just said is that they developed, um, they, they made a, a big bet on something that pushed them into being culturally different than they had been before, mm -hmm. right? And now, I don't know if they, their voting systems are far more sophisticated than ours because they do it all electronically, safely, et cetera. So Lithuania is an interesting thing to watch. <laughs> All right, I won't put it in the minutes, but I mean, if we're looking at these other towns are taking our employees and we're not, what is the culture of Concord that we're trying to do? That's the other piece of this, right? Is how are we going to be the hot place? And when those towns do what you say and say, look, we need this position, we're gonna pay you well, and we're going to get the best, right? Why do they do that? There has to be a strategy behind it, a reason for them to do that as a community be, to become something, right? And what are we doing with Concord? Do we, is it all only about pay? I don't think that's true. It has to be a community that people want to be a part of, right? So how, how do we fit I don't think this changes anything about the, the, the towns. I do think that Mr. Perry's comment about where people are going, we, if there were data on that, that would be wonderful to understand, right? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I still stand by, let's recommend this, but I would un, want to understand where we're going as a town. This is a very important study for that future. I think I mentioned that, I, I think those excellent comments. I, I mentioned, I think it was at the last time on the Zoom meeting, is that from my experience, people leave for other than money reasons. Yeah. And money is important, but I mentioned about career growth, I mentioned about management training, I mentioned about benefits, 
Um, I mean, I had a whole six or seven different categories that's important. And I think I think they also I mentioned that that the personnel board should be looking at these areas. Um, and, you know, the, the objective is to have a city that is more attractive for people to come to and for people to stay. That that's the that that's that's the objective. And how we get there is really only through examining, I think, the various elements associated with what I've already said. But pay is important. And that's obviously something we're addressing right now. And we should we should continue to focus on that right now and move ahead. Okay. So, so we are back to uh, we are back to a motion that uh, was not taken off the table, but we haven't voted on it. Oh, right, right. Okay. Right, Liz, is that how your understanding as well? Yep. Right. Okay. okay. So, so we're voting. Well, because I made the mo Liz made it. I seconded second it. Right. Yeah. And let's, but it's important, I think, to restate. Okay. Because we've had a lot of, okay. a lot of going back and forth. All right. Do you have anything? Listen, <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so let me let me make certain. Let's, All right. We've got the eighteen. That's right. We have the six. Right. And the two. Yes. On this sheet of paper. Right. So the motion was that we would include the we first would include the 18, eighteen six and two six and two, and that would give uh, Amy uh, the time to look at Littleton and Broughton and as well as now uh, Andover and Natick Natick and and any other that that may they may decide to look at. So it leaves we've got a set uh, twenty six right. with the discretion with Amy and the representative from the personnel board to approve any additions or subtractions. Right. Is that or she can bring them back to the board. That sound? Yeah, whichever what you, you prefer, whether you'd rather have it come back to the board or if you'd oh, like right. to have a liaison at uh, subcommittee or one of you or um, I, I, I think mean, if, if yeah. Depending upon your own interest, if yeah. you'd like to be involved in that, that's great. We'll 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 have an arrangement whereby that's the case, and it may be another personnel board meeting. Okay. Yeah. This is the, the same. Too. You're, so you're quite a few things in town. So you may say, you know, I've got. So it's sort of sort of what your own personal interest is in, in this as well. So what what would you want, uh, Amy? You're going to look at the four of them and make sort of make some decision on if there should come back on and we should look at add them to our original listing. I think if, if there was a uh, dramatic change in the approach or philosophy that that's the kind of thing I would suggest definitely come back to the whole okay. board. Okay, otherwise. Otherwise, that we'd stay on the path that was discussed here. The board understands uh, the group of communities that, that are going to uh, be used with a few possible tweaks, substitutions to get at some of the discussion points that, that you've had today. And that um, somebody from the board, whether it's the chair or you want to choose somebody else, would be the one to work with staff to finalize that list and and again that person also if they thought that it had strayed beyond the discussions tonight could certainly say you know we got to bring this back to the board and make and get more input so okay so i think and i know liz has got this motion down okay <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so all in favor. God bless you. Aye. Aye. Nancy, Crowley, let's call them. Aye. And Bill Maracha, aye. Okay. Excellent. Um, would either of you two uh, like to be the liaison here to, to work with Amy in terms of the finalizing? Well, I mean, it, it, obviously, I'll. I'm happy to do it, but I don't, you know, right. sometimes it's nice to yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you're some, looking at. Some opportunity time. to uh, yeah. 
to be involved. You both look at me and I'll say yes. I, I, if that, I can happily okay. spend time, Amy, with you if you're willing to, to uh, or Kelly, but, okay. to sort through things um, and then report. But I, I need to understand better the process of reporting back to the board as a liaison um, because emails for both of you would be not acceptable, right? So how do, how do I do that? Only at public meetings? At, well, Established meetings or through couldn't Amy just come back. And, yeah, right. Through you can't. Amy. Right. You can't yeah. deliberate through email. Right. Um, okay. But there are ways that we can communicate with you as individuals that, or provide you with information. So we'll just yeah. have to be very careful not to turn it into any sort of deliberation. Yeah, I mean, we're we're I right. I think we'd want to report back at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Um, so we can move on to. Uh, the next agenda item, which is the personnel study, study task force. I believe I saw an email as I was coming in here that the um, that it's been the forum has been rescheduled again. Um, so it was going to be the twelfth, and I think it's now the nineteenth. Okay. Right. So the twelfth was at the light plant from one to two. Right. Oh. Now that's gone. Oh. That's also. Key. Cancel. No, wait, no. Yeah. That that's was now canceled. canceled. We just got word yeah, of yeah, that yeah, yeah. also. Yeah, that I got. Rescheduled. So I thought the 19th was a presentation to the personnel board. That's not going to happen. So the 19th is at the light plan from one? I don't believe there was any um, plan to present to the personnel board. There was going to be a meeting oh, to the select board. board and you're right, that was going to be the 19th. Okay. Uh, that was a tentative date. But as I understood it, and again, I was just seeing it right before I came in here. Right now, there's going to be a forum on the 19th. That will be for citizens and employees yeah. to provide feedback. And I don't know that they have yet set the date to then report back to the select board, which would be their final step. So they will, on the 19th, at the forum at the light plant, I guess. They're going to be reporting their findings to em employees and citizens. So we would not be hearing about that, those. You are welcome to attend and uh, absolutely may attend. And if I'm remembering correctly, Terry Ackerman also suggested that would be a great time that if you have questions, Things that you wanted to learn through this process or questions about their recommendations, you all could participate in that forum as well and ask those questions. Um, so I know that there were um, a number of questions and considerations that way back um, the personnel board when the personnel board was talking about this that you had all been thinking about, which was what are the advantages of keeping something in the bylaw, or what are the advantages of this policy and what are the disadvantages? And we had sort of made some charts for you to consider and then things took a different path. And I don't know that you worked all the way through that. That might be something you wanna look back at mm -hmm. and think about what were the things that you were hoping to get out of it or to learn from it. And those might be the questions that you have. I can send you links to those, they're, they're actually um still on on the personnel board's website um yeah, i think i had some be... other notes as well of things that personnel board members had been hoping to get out of it so i'm happy to send those to you 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 are uh as i understand it welcome to ask questions of the task force there as well mm -hmm. um so so the august 8th final report that was stopped apparently was or it was well it was stopped from being being published for public use that that particular document though from reading the minutes of the personnel study task force did get out to a lot of people is that is that your understanding i am not involved in it i don't know where it has gone um i don't know if well, I mean, if you read this, the personnel study task force, that particular document was not something that chief judge 
anyway, it, I guess I'm trying to understand how much, how, how many people have actually seen that document that was determined to be inappropriate. And so I'm, I'm just, you know, we're, anyway, it doesn't seem like we, we really know yeah, the answer to that, I, but I guess, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's troubling to me, so. I guess I feel like, because the task force was put together to critique the personal board's job, you know, whatever, <clears throat> that I guess I would have felt that we would have had them come to t tell us and go over everything, maybe here, so we could, instead of with citizens and employees and like we're an afterthought. That's yeah. So, so I that's how I take it. So I just again, I haven't been involved in that process, right. but my observation mm -hmm. was that um, that joint meeting that they had with the personnel board and the task force that that's what they were looking to do whether you fully had the information i think what i've heard from you is your concerns about whether you really knew what their recommendations were or had an opportunity to comment on it yeah. Yeah. um whether that was an in-depth enough discussion um right. so I, certainly i think that's something that you as the board could could choose to communicate back to the task force if you felt that there was was more that you wanted to discuss or comment on or, or learn. My sense is, is the sooner this is over with, the better. Yeah. And I you know, agree. once the once the uh, report, in fact, is made available publicly, communication to this to the select board, then I mean, that report's not binding on anybody. So they have but a we, made a presentation to the select no, board. I thought that we, was to happen first. Well, it may happen. It's not going to happen on the nineteenth. And we, as the personnel board, will be responsible after that takes place to, I'm sure, provide input to the select board as to how we, you know, what are our thoughts and what do we recommend. We have to wait and see what the personnel study task force is recommending. It, it may be that we agree to that. It may be that there are we don't agree, or it may right. be that there's no right. there are no recommendations. Right. So we, we just have to wait. Right. I guess what I'm still saying is, it, to me, it would be um, uh, let me see the right way to to do it would be to come to the personal board, personnel board, to tell us the recommendations before they have this meeting with employees and citizens, and we're hearing it at that time. It would be nice to hear it here or at our meeting, even if. People go on on the Zoom, but we would be hearing it right then and there, and not hearing it in an audience for the first time. Okay. I, I just that's just feel that's the professional way of doing it. But I think that's my comment, and I think your comments will be reflected in the minutes. I okay. think that's very good. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I, I'll say I agree to Nancy's comment. I think that the joint meeting was very helpful for me as a not here at the beginning of it all, um, but I would definitely like to see them before there's a public discussion right. because we don't know what the critique yeah. is. Right. So, all right, I'll well, put that in the minutes. Hopefully that I they agreed. heard us now. All right, so. so I think, and we, number five, we don't have any uh, minutes to approve tonight which we will next time. I, I sent them from our last meeting. You sent them Friday evening, but I wasn't able, I'd oh, okay. sent out Saturday morning. Or Saturday I morning. Yes. So I wasn't able to get them into the packet. You are never and... going to be fired, no matter what <laughs> you do. You, you are going to sit right at the top of the table forever. As long as I'm on we will. <laughs> we'll even provide valet parking. <laughs> I'd have one um, sentence out while she's done. Uh, to I was late. That was the point I was making too. And I, I actually was off the grid briefly, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I I know that uh, Terry Ackerman's waiting with a question, and I have one question for Liz or a comment related to minutes. Um, first, was just the joint meeting. Um, 
Okay. Yes. Are, are you doing I, those too? Okay. I, I have them and I apologize that I No, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure. There's a glitch okay. in my So you each each board the board and the task force will each have there. So yeah, then Bill, I apologize. I knew Bill, that you have a I question um that's waiting from Terry Ackerman on, on the oh, screen. All right. Sorry. I, um Terry Ackerman, I'm the uh, select board liaison and I wanted to react to something I think I heard Bill say a couple of minutes ago. Bill, I think you said that the personnel board should be able to um, express its thoughts on the um, task force study directly to the select board. Um, is, is that what you said? No, I, I think you misunderstood. Um, okay. That's, that's, I mean, I understand the process is that the uh, select board entertains the personnel study task force and they present to you their report correct that's what i that's what i but understood with the process that's correct but then i thought that you said after that the personnel that the select board might want to hear from the personnel board on what your reactions to that report are oh sure i mean i i think uh if we were if we were asked by the select board to provide uh, input or to provide our reaction uh, that I think that would be very appropriate and and I'm sure we would uh, entertain that uh, in a very positive way so but right. I don't think it's our I don't think it's our place to to uh, to, de to demand that or to say this is what I mean it's really it's up to no. the selection yeah right right I I didn't mean that I just um I wasn't sure I heard you correctly. I think that it would be appropriate, I, and I think the select board would want to get reaction from the personnel board. Okay. So what I'm wondering is, do you have a meeting scheduled um, between the 19th when you're going to uh, go to the forum and hear the report? between that date and October 3rd, when the task force is supposed to come to the select board to us. Because on October 3rd, I think that would be appropriate that the select board might ask, well, is anyone here from the personnel board and what is your reaction? Well, than us scheduling yet another meeting, I guess, um, because we have a lot of demands on our meeting time. But since we're already talking about the topic October 3rd, if you as a personnel board have had a chance to discuss it um, and can react that night to the select board, that would be great. And if you can't schedule a meeting by then, perhaps we even delay the October 3rd meeting um, so that you would have enough time to discuss it before then. I think that uh, some good points. I think, uh, Terry, we need, the personnel board needs to figure out when it can meet over the next couple of weeks. Right. Because uh, we haven't really spent any time trying, I think, to sort that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a commitment that I know I'm going to be gone for some days uh, here, but um, I think uh, as long as we now know that you would like to have some feedback from the personnel board as to what has been presented, um, then I guess we have to see when we could find a meeting and then advise you as to when that meeting is going to be, and then see how that fits into the select board schedule. Okay. Does okay. that make sense? That makes total sense. I just pointed out because there's very few days between September 19th and October 3rd. And so right. like 10 days. So if you want to get feedback and you don't have enough time, we could probably um, ask the chairman uh, to put off that October 3rd meeting um, until you know the next meeting or something. See, I wonder, Terry, though, if there's, I don't know if, see, in my, in my thinking, that we should let the personnel task force present to the select board. Mm -hmm. And then at a subsequent meeting of the select board, we, the personnel board, provide our feedback. I don't think it has to be done at the same time. 
Right. It, uh, I think that's um, up to the chairman to decide, not Johnson. I don't think that you can decide or I can decide. And it has more to do with how many other folks are trying to get on our agenda and what all of those demands are. So I will talk to him about that. And I'm sure he'll have an opinion one way or the other. Again, my, my preference is let, because it's all along, it's been, uh, the plan has been to have the personnel task force present to the select board. Right. I think we should go ahead and have that happen. Okay. So, and that would be my recommendation for you to pass along to Matt, or I could, you know, uh, do that. But, and then at a subsequent meeting, we, the personnel task, uh, we, the personnel board provide our feedback. Right, when we've had time. Right, when we've had time okay. to. Okay, I'll pass that along. As okay, you. okay, thank you, thank you. Oh boy. <laughs> Great. So. All right. Is that the end of so, the I think that's, I guess. I think that's the end of the meeting. I will, will you uh, make move? a motion. Okay. If it's all right. Sure. To, to, um, to end this meeting, to um, end this meeting, and the time is 7.37 p.m. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. All right. We have, it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. And aye. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank That's you awesome. all.